This is the first in a series of tutorials designed to take you from a deepfakes beginner to an expert of the craft. This episode is for absolute beginners and will help you to create your first deepfake. More advanced users will not learn anything new but should look out for subsequent tutorials. The following episodes will look at the different steps of deepfaking in far more detail. To get early access to the tutorials, or simply to give Derpfakes a helping hand, consider checking out the Patreon page linked in the description below. Before we begin, we need to consider what we want to achieve. This triangle helps us to visualize the three main areas of deepfake creation. The first point is quality. This includes the blending of the original and new faces as well as the overall definition and clarity of the face, the lack of artifacts or flickering and so on. Likeness is also classified under quality. The second point is speed. This is simply how long it takes you to complete your project. The third and final point is duration. This is the length of the clip that you are working on. Having looked at these three points, it is important to understand that as a general rule, you can only choose two. A clip with a long duration for example, will take longer to create if you wish to maintain a decent quality throughout, but can be made quickly at the expense of that quality. A lengthy and high quality clip can also be created, but this will take more time. Affecting each of the three points in their own way are hardware, for example your graphics card. Software, for example, the scripts that you choose to work with. And most importantly, your experience, both in a deepfaking sense, but also in a broader computing sense. Basic to moderate computing skills will immediately give you an advantage when starting with deepfakes. Let's begin. First, we must download our software. There are a number of options for deepfaking, however for this video series we will be using DeepfaceLab also called DFL. It is a good option for both beginners and more advanced users and is relatively easy to operate. Click the link in the description and you will be taken to the DFL repo. The README gives a good overview of each of the models. Later on, you will need to pick which model you want to use for training. Follow the link at the bottom of the repo for the latest build of DFL. Extract the file once it's downloaded. Open the DeepfaceLab folder and you'll see two subfolders along with a list of batch files. Within our workspace, we can see three empty folders. The first is data underscore DST. DST is short for destination. This folder will hold the frames of our original video once they are extracted. The second folder is data underscore SRC. SRC is short for source. This will hold our data for the new face that will be replacing the original one. The last folder is called model. This will eventually hold the model specific to these two data sets but not the actual model scripts themselves. You can also see two mp4 video files, data underscore dst and data underscore src. These will be split into frames and form our two sets of data. Both of these video files come with DFL. You can of course replace these with your own videos but you must remember to rename your own files as data underscore DST and data underscore SRC respectively. There are other ways to approach this but for now, renaming will be the easiest route for beginners. With our video files in place, we must perform two operations before training. First, we must split our videos into separate frames. For SRC, we have a few default options. For now, run the extract PNG from video data underscore SRC 5 frames per second or FPS option. This runs a batch file that splits our videos into PNG format image files. When collecting your own datasets, try to ensure you have a good variety of faces. This means multiple angles and facial expressions. Whilst you do need at least a few hundred images, do not sacrifice quality for quantity. If you want to create a dataset that includes single images, such as those from Google Images, simply add these to data underscore SRC once you have split any videos you require. Doing so before video splits will cause the standalone images to be lost. Once this is completed, run the full FPS batch file for video data underscore DST. This may take some time depending on the resolution, frame rate and length of the video files, as well as your own hardware. 
Once the process is complete, the console window will close automatically. You can check the data sets for a successful split if you are unsure. Now for our second operation. Both of our new data sets must go through face extraction. This step can also take some time. Run, extract faces DLIB all GPU for data underscore SRC. Unlike the previous step, this console will not automatically close upon completion, however it does display some useful information. Images found, should be equal to the number of images in our data set, in this case, SRC. Faces found shows how many faces have been extracted. This may be more or less than the number of images found, either because of multiple faces in a frame, poor detection of a face, or a false positive. We will look at both data sets to ensure a good face extraction but first we repeat the face extract step for data underscore DST. Again, this may take some time. As you can see, some frames either did not contain faces or the faces failed to be detected. Depending on your specific dataset, this may or may not be a problem. Let's have a look at both data underscore SRC and data underscore DST in more detail. We can see our split frames. In the newly formed folder, aligned, we can see the extracted faces. Some of these face detections are incorrect and must be deleted. As this is our DST dataset, it is recommended you do not delete images with blur or obstructions, at least at this stage. Our SRC faces have extracted well. With SRC datasets, it is recommended that you remove blurred faces, low-quality faces or any images that have considerable obstruction of the face. This may include faces that leave the area of the original frame. We are now ready for training. Select the model you wish to use and run the corresponding batch file. I recommend that beginners use the H64 model as this will give faster, albeit lower quality results. This allows you to practice the process and hone your skills quickly before moving to the newer scripts. You will be prompted to set up the options on a first time run of a model. For beginners, use the defaults by pressing the return key for each option. These options will be explained in detail in another tutorial. To adjust these options on a model that you have already started, use the session options batch file for the appropriate model type. As the model loads, it displays various information, including the session options and size of the dataset. Once it is loaded, a new window appears. This is called the preview window and displays a visual representation of the progress of the training as well as the total number of epochs. To update the preview window, press the P key. To close it and end training, press the Enter key. There is no set rule for how long you should train for. Some people like to look at the loss values at the bottom of the console. I prefer to judge by the preview window as this also helps to adapt your data sets, something that will be explored in the next tutorial. When you are happy with previews, press enter to end training. Now we must convert the faces, sometimes this is also called merging the faces. Find and run the convert batch final that matches your chosen model. In this case, we choose Convert H64. We are presented with various options on how the face will be converted. Just as with the training, beginners should stick to the defaults before experimenting further. Let the conversion run. Once complete, we can see a new folder called Merged has appeared in our data underscore DST folder. This contains the newly converted frames which must be sequenced into a video. This can be done in most video editing software by importing the files as an image sequence. It can also be done by running the converted to mp4 batch file. Let's take a look at result.mp4 which can be found in the workspace. The result is clearly very poor, but this is our very first step into deepfaking. 
Each time we fix a problem we learn something new and over time we can reduce the errors and increase the quality. Many of the problems encountered with this output can be fixed relatively easily by altering a few steps along the way. Experiment and see what training and conversion methods work for you and your video. These fixes will be explored in far greater detail in the rest of this tutorial series. The next episode looks at data collection, dataset creation and face extraction as part of executing a fluid and ultimately successful deepfakes project. Let's quickly return to our deepfakes triangle. Beginners may struggle to achieve any of the three points, but as your experience grows, you will soon be making high-quality videos. This triangle will become more relevant going forward as we look at ways to maximize our standards and efficiency. Thank you for watching episode 1 of the tutorial series. One last thing before I go. The single best piece of advice I can give to a new deepfaker is to practice, practice and then practice some more. Nothing else will accelerate your development as fast. There is no fast track when it comes to making consistently high quality deepfakes in a reasonable amount of time. Please like, subscribe and share if you enjoyed the video.